Okay, welcome back to part three of Jason's Kerbal Space Program tutorial for complete newbies. <clears throat> I have a new microphone set up here, so hopefully you can hear me a little better now. And I've turned the game sounds back on, so or the music anyway, so we can we can get some cool music when we go into space. So uh, just let's recap a little bit. In the first in the first tutorial, we learned how to build a very simple rocket. Uh, there was a booster attached to a command capsule that we got a little bit of science on researched some new technologies, and then built a rocket that actually went into space. So beyond Kerbin's atmosphere, into space, got some science up there, and then came back down and researched some new technologies that, in theory, should let us build a rocket and a ship that can circle Kerbin, that could orbit the planet. So if our first test was Alan Shepard, or our, our, rather our last tutorial was Alan Shepard's flight, this is going to be John Glenn's flight where we actually establish an orbit and go around the planet a few times. That's our goal. So let's go to the vehicle assembly building, where we should hear some snazzy jazz music. There we go. All right, so remembering that we want to work from the, uh, the last thing we want to do forward, I'm going to start with our command pod, realign, kind of move it up a little bit, press Q to rotate. That music's still pretty loud. I may just switch that down a little bit here. Doop, 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 doop. To 10%. Okay. And we're back. Yeah, it's much better, okay. It's hard to tell in the microphone, or in the headphones, exactly how loud that is to you guys. So I guess we'll figure that out as we go. So the last thing we wanna do is return safely. So we're gonna put a parachute on top here. This time we also, uh, our capsule's gonna be a little heavier than our last one's been, and we want to, our last couple have been. And we really want to be sure we get back safe. So we are going to put two, uh, hit X for the, symmetry two parachutes on the side as well this will make sure we slow down enough that we get to the ground with all of our science intact so uh, speaking of science that's the other thing we want the top part of our ship to do we're going to put a science junior this is our newly unlocked component it's a large science bay so you get a, quite a bit of data from running experiments on this we're gonna put that under our capsule, and then we'll put the barometer on one side, the thermometer on the other side, and our, oh, whoops, actually, yep. <laughs> Forgot to turn the symmetry off, so that's easy enough to fix. You just take the parts, remove them, cycle through your symmetry, thermometer, barometer. But we do want symmetry for our mystery goo containers. So hitting X, there we go. A nice little, nice little science capsule uh, that can run some experiments. So uh, we could, at this point, we have unlocked a heat shield. Um, I don't think we're going to take a little risk on this mission because a heat shield is weight, and we've already put some parachutes on the top too that also weigh stuff. Uh, that, that have a, a certain weight. So um, I don't think we're gonna need a heat shield. We're gonna, we're gonna take a risk and, and see. So here's how we decouple from the next stage. So uh, working backwards, so this is what will, this capsule is what will eventually deorbit. Uh, so what we need is a stage designed to deorbit the ship once it is in a circular orbit. So by mass, so we could take the swivel but we are actually going to take the slightly lighter Reliant engine for this stage and put it here. So this should have enough uh, delta V, um, enough thrust to, if you're in orbit, to deorbit and then get rid of this fuel tank and this uh, and this engine as we tumble back towards a hopefully safe landing on Kerbin. So we go and grab our decoupler. And you'll notice it automatically adds fairings around the engine, uh, little metal shells that will just uh, 
kind of float away after after we remove this stage, which is useful. So you kind of keep your rockets aerodynamic. Any of the decouplers will will do that as you add them. And then back to our fuel tank. So we're again working backwards. We need a ship that will uh, can circularize, can get to, and circularize an orbit. So we need to get all the way up to about 75,000 kilometer, or excuse me, 70,000, 75 kilometers, 75,000 meters. Uh, so we know from our last ship that we, we were able to just go pretty much straight up um, a little bit on a little bit of a curve, and it got us pretty far to, I think, 120 kilometers. This time we need, uh, we're gonna need a lot more power to actually not only get in, get up, to 75 kilometers, but then to circularize our orbit when we're there. So I've added one more fuel tank than our last ship, uh, and then a swivel engine for the control. But even this isn't gonna be enough. So we're going to use our decoupler, another one of our newly unlocked parts, to add some boosters. Uh, we are going to use these newly unlocked Thumper solid fuel boosters. They're pretty large, as you can see. Okay, and I am, so you can see now they're attached to these decouplers. Uh, the boosters are great. These will, these will toss our rocket pretty far into the air, which is what we want. Uh, and then what, when the fuel in the boosters is expended, we can get rid of them and turn the, uh, the swivel engine here on, on the second stage. That's the idea. So a couple more things that we're going to need to do before we launch. Oh, um, I'm going to, so I hit the two key, which changes you from part placement mode to offset mode. So offset allows you to click on a part. And if you've placed it as part of a group, you'll move all of the parts. And then it gives you arrows that you can move the part around. So I'm actually going to offset this by sliding it down using the green arrow and then pressing one to go back into the part placement mode. So what that does is just allows you to uh, change how the rocket is balanced slightly, which will matter <laughs> um, a little bit when we're trying to get into orbit. We kind of want, we want, I think I, we talked about this, the weight being as close to the bottom of the rocket as you can. So as the fuel drains, um, it moves to the bottom, which gives you, or you know, the top becomes lighter, the bottom stays heavier, which gives you more control. And this way, uh, you the boosters won't throw off the weight of the entire rocket. So here are three, you can see these are much larger winglets, uh, but more importantly, they've got an elevator slash aileron on them, which will give us some additional control too. Um, so that, I think, is pretty good. What are we gonna call this ship? Um, on our Garfield playthrough, we'll call it uh, Odie. This is the Odie. Check our crew. So instead of a pilot, I'm going to take a scientist this time. And actually, let's go to the astronaut complex real quick. Ooh, Annie Kerman. We'll take her. I like uh, I like using female scientists for my missions. <laughs> So we're gonna take a scientist this time instead of a pilot, because scientists can reset science experiments. And we're gonna to wanna to get as much use out of the science junior bay as we can. That's, uh, that's the idea here. So real quick, we're checking our staging. Parachutes are all on one stage, that's good. Decoupler is good. Uh, third stage engine is good. Decoupler. Second stage engine is good. Radial decouplers. Boosters, I think we're good to go. We're gonna hit save. Uh, Odie already exists. Yes, that's because I just created it. Thank you very much. Uh, and we are going to go launch. Now, I want to fill you guys in. Uh, there's a few things that are gonna kinda happen in fairly rapid succession here, and it's a night launch, which is always fun. Um, a few things that are gonna happen in rapid succession here that I wanna talk through. I will t uh, narrate as I'm going kind of what's going on, but um, it's, uh, it's good to know, um, I think just ahead of time, what to expect. So when, when the speed, when your velocity hits about 100 meters per second, you want to begin what's called a gravity turn as you're going to orbit. And the as Kerbin or, or whatever body you're on rotates, um, the velocity of the rotation of the planet is, is actually moving you through space. So uh, launching and then turning if in the same direction that the planet is rotating allows you to take advantage of that velocity and use less fuel to get into orbit. 
you don't need as much, you don't need to change as much velocity to get into orbit. It's sort of like if you were driving down the highway in a car at 60 miles an hour and you threw a baseball out of the car, the baseball would be traveling at whatever you speed you threw it plus 60 miles an hour if you were doing it in a vacuum, um, which obviously we're not, but or, or you wouldn't be, but you get the idea. You you add your velocity of the velocity of the, uh, the thrust of the engines to the already existing velocity of the planet moving. So we're gonna make our gravity turn at about 100 meters per second. We're gonna to try to keep it at about a 45 degree angle, although you, you'll see that it's <laughs> kind of difficult with a ship like this, uh, but we'll do our best. And um, and as we're doing that, uh, we're gonna kind of aim for, aim for hitting an, uh, an apoapsis of about 73, 75 kilometers up. Um, and once we have that, we're gonna stop our engines and drift or you know coast up to the top of the atmosphere, which is which ends at 70 kilometers here um, on Kerbin. And then once we're up there, we're going to create a maneuver node, which I'll show you when we get there, that will circularize our orbit. So you get up to your apoapsis and you burn prograde to change your periapsis, which we will explain as we go. So if your apoapsis is your highest point, your, your periapsis is your lowest point uh, in your orbit. So because our lowest point is the ground, we want to change that to be the same as our apoapsis, which is what we will do when we get there. So I have throttled all the way up. We are ready to go. Annie Kerman is ready for her first mission, and we are going to go to launch. Setting the SAS to prograde. And starting the gravity turn. I'm really just hitting mostly just W, a little A and D, to keep the ship from tilting too far in either direction, and Q and E to rotate as we're going. All right, supersonic. About half our fuel used to our boosters. That's good. We are about to lose. Our boosters may hit each other and explode when I decouple them. But that's okay. That's within normal parameters. Hey, they did. Awesome. So I got rid of... There they go. <laughs> I knew they would do it. So I got rid of the boosters and then uh, quickly ignited the second stage engine. I actually could have staged that so it all happened at the same time. I just didn't. So here we are. Apoapsis of 40,000 feet. I went into map mode by pressing M, so I'm going to even go deeper than 45 degrees because we are we still have quite a bit of upward velocity, which is good, and this will help us. You can see I'm the arc is oh and X to kill our thrust as we are coming up on. An apoapsis of 70. So you can see that the apoapsis is actually declining a little bit. Uh, and the reason for that is, whoops, um, the reason for that is we're still in atmosphere, so the drag is bringing us down, but it's not going to bring us down that much. So you click on where you want, and then you add a maneuver. Uh, and you have, um, you can see the prograde sign, which is what we want. I'm just trying to zoom out. There we go. The prograde side, so the green, or excuse me, the orange is your planned maneuver. So what I want to do is pull this out, burning prograde until it's still not quite there. And we're super close. Periapsis of 62. Now we need to go higher, 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 higher. 69, you can't have a periapsis in the atmosphere, your orbit will eventually decay. So there you go, periapsis of 71,000 feet, apoapsis of 90, or excuse me, uh, 71,000 meters, 97,000 meters, and it will take 1,094 meters per second of delta V to get there. And we are about to start our burn, so I'm going to tell our SAS to point us towards our maneuver, which is the blue thing, and that music means we just hit space is awesome so yeah we are in space and so you can see our node is in 27 seconds you want to burn 
as close to the node as you can. So we're going to throttle up now while SAS keeps us pointed at the maneuver, which will, you can see our blue arc is changing. So the delta V that is required for this maneuver, delta V is a measure of a change of velocity. And it's essentially a resource in Kerbal Space Program, or, or in, in space really, um, that is a function of the weight of your vessel, the weight of your ship, and how much fuel you have, and the thrust you have, uh, and the relationship with the object you're around. Um, and we're going to hit X as soon as we... Nope. Did we make it? Not quite. All right, so I'm just shifting up, throttling up slightly until our periapsis is above 70,000 feet, which should be right about there. Okay, so our orbit will not decay. I want to say thank you. You've done your job. 102,000 meters, 70,000 meters. Not quite a circular orbit, but it's pretty darn good considering we are eyeballing this and spitballing this. Okay, um, so let's talk a little bit about Delta V. It's, it's a resource that, uh, that you need in Kerbal Space Program. Um, and we'll talk in, a, in some future, uh, we'll talk in some future tutorials about planning longer term missions by calculating Delta V um, more precisely. Now, there are some people who will literally do it by hand, or alternatively, there are mods that can help you do it, which is significantly easier because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of just kind of going, well, I think we need five fuel tanks and an engine. So instead, you can uh, just, you, you can automatically calculate delta V to know, okay, well, if I need 600 delta V to land on this moon and then 600 to take off, then that means my lander needs a total of 1200 delta V. So uh, anyway, that's all for the most part, neither here nor there. We're in space to do science. Let's do some science. All right, material study. The microgravity has greatly affected the growth of crystal structures. That's cool. We're gonna keep that experiment. So try running the mystery goo experiment while we're up here still get a little science for that that's cool don't know about the barometer nope nothing from that nothing doing might as well check the thermometer nothing doing is our crew report worth anything right now nope okay so that means annie is going to go eva Boom. oh looks like she almost got set up oh, there's the moon back there by the way pretty cool. All right, not sure if it's worth grabbing an EVA report. Hey, it's science. Yes, it absolutely is. That's right, because we're above uh, different biomes. So you can see uh, EVA report from above Kerbin Shores. That's pretty cool. Um, so every biome that you're over when you're on EVA, you can get a difference. So if you collect data, it says, oh, remove, restoring functionality will require a scientist. Yes, that's exactly what we want to do. Restore, she can restore it, which just resets the bay. So now we can use it again. Um, and we're going to board. And we're going to EVA again, because if we have lucked out, she was over the shores. She might be over a different biome now. Water, okay, we've already got this one. We did this on our last, uh, our last run through. So if we were over a different biome, we could get a different set of data for another eight points. Okay. <clears throat> so there we are. We're on the night side of Kerbin. I'm going to uh, actually warp time up to 50 times till we come around. There's the Terminator. There's the sun. Probably over a different biome. So I'm going to EVA again. Get an EVA report. Nope, we're still over water. Well, golly. Fast forward again. Still over water. Okay, whatever. Well, we're over land for sure now, so let's try this. Highlands, that's cool. Grab that. 
pylons are actually pretty small, so there's a chance we can warp a little further and grab something else. Grasslands, I guess we got, may have gotten that before. Well, that's okay. Okay, we got some, we got pretty good science from that little uh, run. So, let's see. It's probably time to think. So we can spin around Kerbin a few times. There's not really, oh man, a pretty great, uh, a pretty great, almost the, uh, almost zero degree inclination orbit. That's pretty cool. Okay, um, so we're actually, we're almost at our periapsis, which is great. In fact, we're gonna be there in, oh, no, I'm sorry, that's on the other side of the planet. Ah. Yeah, okay. So, our apoapsis, that's okay. So we're at the apoapsis in three minutes. So remember, if you want to change your periapsis or change your apoapsis, the most logical place to do it is at the reverse. So if you change your, where in terms of the most efficient use of your fuel and the, the least delta V. So to change our periapsis, which right now is just above the atmosphere, we're going to do it at the apoapsis. Uh, and we're going to burn so our periapsis is either on the ground or just inside the atmosphere enough that the drag will take us to the ground. So we're going to fast forward just a little bit. So we're almost at the apoapsis. I've used the SAS to point us retrograde, so away from the spin of the planet, which will deorbit us. You remember we have a little, we got a little bit of fuel left in the main stage, which we're just going to burn. And I think we're just about there, 15 seconds, yeah. Close enough. So we're going to fire it up. Uh, so we're going to burn the less, rest of the fuel in our main stage. Eject it. And before I turn the engine on, I'm just going to flip the map open again. Okay, so this actually puts us somewhere. Okay, so we're in the atmosphere. Uh, but we've got this extra fuel, we packed it. We might as well just fire up our engines and see what happens. So it will not take us long to burn through this fuel tank. I'm going to cut it off there. There we go. That's what I wanted to have happen. I want to land on this continent somewhere uh, so we can get some more science from this little mission. I'm also going to do something super fun, which is run the Science Junior experiment as soon as we hit the atmosphere so we can grab the data from the upper atmosphere. And then she can, in theory, if we've done this right, get out and reset it when we hit the ground. So uh, that is the order of operations. I'm going to speed up until we hit the atmosphere, which will be at 70 kilometers so right there. And you'll notice, I think we talked about this before, the game automatically slows you down, so we are Kerbin's upper atmosphere, so it's worth another 22, so we will keep that experiment with some good stuff. Can't remember what our mystery goo is like. See if we can grab another mystery goo while we're up here. 2.1.0, we might as well, because we can always reset it when we hit the ground. So we're coming in, and we're coming in at a pretty decent speed, actually. So right now, as the atmospheric drag slows us down, uh, we're going to land closer and closer. You'll see this arc kind of move. I'm actually going to crank our engines to slow down even more. Yeah, not too much, but some. So that puts us... Okay, good. That's what I want. I didn't want to land in that water. So I'm going to stage and separate, which will get rid of the last stage of our ship. So now we are just this little science vessel with no engines and just some parachutes drifting slowly through the atmosphere on our way down. Uh, so I'm going to speed us up, and you'll see, there we go, we're going to start to heat up. In fact, it's going to get pretty toasty. You can see the heat bars indicating like, oh yeah, things are heating up, the parts could explode. We don't want that to happen. We don't want the parts to explode. And you can see we're slowing down. The drag is the drag, which is what's causing the heat in the first place. The friction from the drag is slowing us down. 
If we had a heat shield, this wouldn't be an issue at all. But since we didn't take one, I think we can still make it. Boy, I hope so. Ooh, things are getting awfully warm. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Slow down. Slow down, please. Okay, I think we're okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Kerbal Space Program. And now, the, now that we're down here, the capsule's going to be a lot harder to control. SAS is no longer working correctly. Can't. It's not aerodynamic enough. The much more rounded front end is pointed, is uh, rather than the rather unrounded back end. So what we want to do is wait until the drag slows us down enough that our parachutes are safe to deploy. So when these turn white, there we go. Spacebar space bar deploys our chutes. There you go. Imagine your epic theme song here. And now we're just going to drift slowly down, probably onto Kerbin's grasslands is what it looks like. I want to speed time up. Oh, there's our stage hitting the ground. Speed time up just a little bit until our chute's open. There we go. A nice slow 4.3 meters per second. That's good. Oh, even slower. My, that's just perfect. Because if we go too fast, our little science junior might blow up and that we need the data in there. We need to run this experiment because we need the science points. It's all about science. Collect the experiments. So I have got the time warp on four times because otherwise this would take forever. Although it's beautiful to watch, um, especially on some of the planets with thicker atmospheres where you can parachute for much higher uh, and safer. But it can also be fairly boring if you're not into that sort of thing. <laughs> All right, we're almost there, so I'm going to slow down the time warp. I'm not sure this is even necessary in the current version of Kerbal Space Program. It's just a, lay a holdover from the old days of not uh, not being in time warp either when you hit a surface, hit an atmosphere, boom, and we landed. Perfect, safe, awesome landing. So, she's going to go EVA. First things first. Uh, we've already done it on the grasslands, that's fine. Got a surface sample over here. Yeah, it's worth a little bit. That's nothing. Okay. Scurry, scurry. Collect data. Restore. Now I think, yeah, she should just be able to run the experiment while she's out here. Indeed. Collect data. Yep. Collect data. Restore. Observe. That's yeah, worth a little bit. You know what? That's fine. And we are going to recover our vessel. Now we wouldn't we haven't gotten oodles and oodles of science for doing what we just did. But we did get some. 122. So let's go see what we can unlock with this. Not a lot. Everything costs uh, about 45 now. 45. And I think these are even yeah. So we could grab one of these. So landing. Not really anything there we need. Stabilizers and mono propellant. Well, okay, that's kind of interesting. Space exploration. Nothing we need there. These are all adapters and docking ports. Don't need any of that. Now, electrics. This is this is interesting. This is something that we might want to consider because we could really use not only the battery, but the uh, photovoltaic panels. Not sure we need anything from that set. 
struts and the terrier engine. Huh, okay. Well, and the, the Rocket Max decoupler. Yeah, we're not going to really need that yet, but we will. The struts are super useful, and man, these rocket parts are useful. So we're going to go that and general construction, which gives us 32 science left. But that's okay, because we have a new mission next time. We're going to prepare for our moon landing by at least going around the moon and coming back to gather some science. So until then, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and found it educational. Uh, I will see you on tutorial four when we go around the moon. Later.